We're here at AirVenture Oshkosh and we've come around to look at something a little bit different than we've seen from the Rands Company. We've covered a lot of their airplanes, some great flying machines there. This one's a little bit different. Talking today with Randy Schlitter, the principal and main designer for the company. I'm Dan Johnson and I just gotta ask you, Randy, it's a nice looking airplane. They all usually are from your company, but how are you making it work with no fabric on the wings? It's revolutionary, Dan. Revolutionary concept. Yeah, we've been able to fly this plane without a cover on it. <laughs> now that I gotta see. As long as you put it on a flatbed trailer and go really fast. So. <laughs> that works. Actually, people love to see what we sometimes call a bare bones example yeah. because you cover them all up, you paint them all pretty and everything. That's great, they look nice, but what is all that stuff inside? But you did this for a specific reason on this particular airplane we're looking at here. What's the, what's the new deal? Well, this aircraft does show off uh, aircraft parts that are in production. Uh, the It's a new airplane. And this is what for you now? Let's identify this that. This S20. S20, so. 20, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's called the Raven. Raven. We like to right. have the sound, Rans, Raven sounds. and I like that. Well, you usually do a good job with identifying it by a number, but also by a name, because a name gives it a little personality. So Yes, and we didn't make that word up like we usually do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of your names are kind of different. Combinations of things. But it's a very interesting project. We've had a lot of people wish that we built a side-by-side -side S7 Courier. Ah, okay. And we uh, last year we displayed a fuselage of a mock-up of a plane that was going to be the S7 XP, or uh, excuse me, the S6 XP. S6 XP. And okay. my goodness, we we looked at all the model numbers the six series had, and we says, you know, we got to do something different because <laughs> we're going to get confused and we're never going to get. It I right. have been for some time exactly. about which S6 it is. So we. Uh, we had a aha moment and I says, well, let's just take the best of two aircraft. All right. So we started at the nose. We took firewall forward for the Coyote. And this is the new Coyote engine install. Okay. Then we took the wings off the seven. Okay. Took the tail, borrowed the control system stuff from the S6, invented some new really slick seats that are just really neat, which you'll have to try and we'll get a movie of that. Okay. And so we borrowed about maybe 90% of this airplane. All we had to do is create a new fuselage, so we're already 90% flight tested. <laughs> well, it's an interesting fusion. The S6 has been a big seller for you for a number of exactly. years. It's your number yeah. one seller, is it not? Uh, we're pushing over 3,000. Oh, right. just the S6? Just the 6. And how many total airplanes from Rams? 5,000. 5,000. So both numbers are high values. One of our solid companies in the light aircraft space, but S6 I know has been a huge thing for you for a long time. But after I flew S7 with you oh, several years ago down at AOPA's event in uh, Tampa, Florida, I realized why everybody loves the S7. That's a sweet flying machine. So when you fuse these two together, did you keep the seven flight characteristics? Well, we have to have because uh, it's mostly that for the aerodynamic parts. The wings and so the forth. The wings yep. and the tail. Uh, we're predicting slight higher crews, and that's because we've taken uh, the plate drag area down a little bit. Now, how have you so, been able to do right? that with, you know, it seems illogical only, that well, you widened it to get two allowing, people in there. We're only allowing small people to fly <laughs> it. So, no, uh, we've done it by taking uh, the dimensions of the six are about 48 by 40. And this is about 47 by 46. Now, what do those values represent? What, what, what do those well, numbers mean? Uh, that was the axle width of the belly. Okay. At 40. Okay. And it's actually about 47 height. Okay. And then we're the same on this, but what we've done is done some tapering. Okay. In the fuselage, and we chopped off quite a few square inches of plate drag by doing that to the Now, excellent. So, you know, what, what is the cockpit width inside this 46. one? 46. 46. Okay. So, you're yeah. big then? Yeah. So how are you going to be offering this airplane to the market? It's going to be offered in uh, partial kits and uh, also full kits. And if everything goes right, we plan on certifying it uh, to SLSA. Oh, okay. We've already had a lot of interest in it. Now you've done, already done that with the S7, you've already yeah. done that with the S6. And the so 19. since you're fusing these together, and the 19, yes, although that one's so different, I didn't include it in the number count here, but since you've already done those other two and you got the drill down, this should not be a big deal to go through the ASTM standards with this. When uh, This aircraft also has a nice feature I like to point out. What's that? Convertible. How's that? Uh, you can take these gear off and bolt it to the aft position. Uh, you notice it's got, it has uh, gussets in two places, so you can take the Yeah, I see. You've got quite a bit of structure back over here. I'll lean in front of you to point out that area. So you can stick the gear. You can 
You could have six wheels on it, or just three of a tri-car tail dragger version if you like. So that's got can a lot they, of... Can the owner, no, no, not with an SLSA, but can we'd Amateur We'd have to do an LOA if they had an SLSA. Okay, but they could swap them back and forth back even and forth. after the fact. Okay. Yes, after the fact. Yeah, so that's very cool. Well, you made me curious about the seats. Why don't we take a cut here now and go look that. at the seats? And also you want to look at the giant baggage compartment. Because I see you brought your dog along. Yeah, he's, he's not said a word all week. But <laughs> Let's nor go did back he and have a look. Let's do that. All right, see these are just quick pins here. And of course, with those apps, he pops in and out. And if you're looking at that uh, plate, you got all these different holes. That'll give you different recline settings. Oh, okay. So like if your passenger's tired and before you take off. it just off, kind of clamps around the center tube, which is welded, and then you put a, a, a looks like pin. stainless over it yeah. just to keep the scratch factor down. down and, and also some white lightning. That's a good, good material to have around the house. Just pin it in, yeah. So you got that. So that's, that's a max recline, and this is probably about the normal setting. Oh, now, okay. most people aren't going to put it there unless they got a lot sleepy passenger but this hole uh, number three hole is my favorite so I'll just demonstrate this so let's say you're a big guy you can't bend a lot you come up to your plane you got the big 51 inch door yeah but we also kicked the panel about three inches forward and that process that brought this uh, ah, okay. forward door to a little easier to get your leg in there so now you do slip up here like so and you got a couple of choices you can put the stick all the way forward get around it pretty easy like that. Okay. Now the cool thing is yeah, that's an easy I'm answer. too far away so I'll grab a handhold. Uh -huh. That's it. That's all you gotta do. And what's happening there is Oh it's gripping through. Yeah friction. we're binding we're binding through there but there's also a row of buttons because what we uh, anticipate is somebody being hot and sweaty and they lean forward and take the seat with them and then they start sliding back. Ah uh, okay. So it's super clever, super uh, no parts involved. So how do we access the baggage area? How do you get in and out or get things in and out of it? Well, okay. yeah, you have this giant baggage area back there, so... Well, what you do is you just fold the seat forward. Now, like we mentioned earlier, if you pop the seat out, we'll probably have as an option a uh, aluminum structure or aluminum aluminum option that'll uh, probably just set on this and come all the way here at the same deck level and then oh, fit on oh, here. I see. Okay, so you could really load some so long stuff in there. Then. You could load long stuff, you could carry a, a patient, stretcher in here, uh, a, wow. a very small petite nurse over there, <laughs> jungle pilot here. And you can go back in cool. uh, third world countries. And some places it takes three days to hike out of the woods. But uh, what you could do also with it is you put that platform in here, you take out both your seats, and you got a sleeper. Huh? Yeah, you could do camping in the airplane then. There's plenty of room. How soon can someone have an airplane if they wanted one want at the show? We could actually get you wing kits within six or eight weeks because guess what? They're already in production. Like 90% of the planes in production. Well, you've been building these wings. parts before anyway, so. What you're looking at, almost everything you see here is in production. Uh, so ultimately, uh, as we speak, the fuselage is being tooled up right now and several copies of this fuselage are being manufactured. But the fly in the soup is flight testing, which we'll have done probably in less than six months, we hope. Of course, now six months from now we're in January, which January in Kansas is ideal weather for flight testing. <laughs> Yikes. Well, that's a lot of information, Randy, as always. We appreciate you giving us all this update on the new S20 Raven with its very cool seat structure that he's putting back in now. Where else do we go to get more information on your website? Well, that's an easy one. Just go to rands.com. Rands.com, we'll put it up on the screen. I've been all over Randy's website and uh, it's a lot of information there. So uh, go have a visit at rands.com. Is that a nice way of saying you can't find your way around? No, it's, a, it's an easily <laughs> navigated site. You can also find out about all kinds of cool bicycles too, which I personally enjoy. Well, uh, we do have a lot of nice, uh, nice features. We got the gallery, we got the wall of fame. That's where all the people who win awards with our planes, uh, we post them there. Of course, we're on Facebook. 
We've got at least five or six people following that, so. <laughs> I'm sure a bit more than that, too, uh, too modest, but Rands.com, I've flown most of Randy's airplanes over the years and reported on those, and we've got lots of other videos and information. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at AirVenture Oshkosh.